Hello everyone, Trentia here, and welcome back to Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. So in the last episode, we completed Chapter 5, following Chie and uh, Yukiko. And now, let's go over to the left here, and we're going to start with Naoto's side. Deduction. town becomes a labyrinth as the clock strikes midnight. It's just like the dark hour described in those documents. I take a deep breath and check my surroundings. First, I review the situation. If I remain calm and collect as much data as I can, I should be able to put together a picture of what's going on. No one's here yet. I'd have thought someone would have come straight to Juness. From what I could tell on my way here, the town is utterly empty. Are you, Senpai, and the others all right? If this phenomenon is the same as the dark hour from the documents, then the only ones capable of moving about in it are Persona users like us. But why? If this was deliberately induced, then what is the culprit's aim in doing so? Since my call with Labyrinth was cut off, I have no idea about her safety either. Is the helicopter she and her companions were riding safe? And what's happened to Mitsurusan and her, uh, retune? Retu her, her crew? This is a dangerous line of thought. I'm losing my cool and can't keep my thoughts straight. I'm no detective in this state. Calm down. If I start worrying, there'll be no end to it. I take another deep breath. I know already that the red fog filling the area isn't poisonous at first blush. I did consider that the enemy might be employing an airborne toxin, but the whole town is covered in the stuff, and there's no way to move about while still avoiding it. Still, it may be best to try not to breathe it in to the extent I can avoid it. Huh? Now, Tokun? Huh? I'm thrown for a loop at being called, uh, being called to out of the blue. I was so lost in thought that my reaction is slightly delayed. Chie Senpai, is that you? Hmm? Uh huh. Why? Thank goodness you're safe. What about the others? How should I know? They've got nothing to do with me. A cheerful answer, the tone of which sounds like Chie Senpai's usual self, but her actual words ring a warning bell on my mind. My senses seem untampered with, from which I take it that you are not Chie Senpai. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Little me? me? I'm Chie Satanaka, though I'm a fake one, based on the real Chie. I see. So you make no effort to hide your true nature. And what are your intentions? What a foolish question, even for me. The town was covered in the strange red fog shortly after the disappearance of Mitsurasan and her people, and now a false Chie senpai identical to the real thing stands before me. I have no inkling as to the enemy's goals, but it is at least apparent that they expect to fight us in order to accomplish them. <laughs> is it obvious? I came to fight you. Are you? Rather, is the culprit who created you the same one who seized Labrys? Or is it an accomplice of his? I want information right now. Even if what stands before me is an imitation, it is honestly answering me this much. I felt that it would be smart to draw out as much information from it as possible. <laughs> Sharp, aren't you, Naoto-kun? But who cares about any of that? Persona! What? A familiar shadow takes form behind the fake Jie senpai Impossible! As close as these fakes are, they are not the genuine article. And not only was this one able to summon the same persona that Jie senpai uses, it did so in the real world? What in the world is going on here? <laughs> After dodging the attack, I jump back and draw the gun to my side. This is no illusion. That was a heavy strike with considerable weight behind it. Did I surprise you? <laughs> Sorry, I meant it as a little weak. It seems the circumstances are different from before. What sort of scheme is unfolding now? Uh oh, solving that's supposed to be the detective's job. You don't hurry and get ready, you'll get yourself. So you have no intention of providing answers. Very well. Are now, John. It's so convenient for us that you catch on quick. Is that General Teddy? You understand without me having to explain, right? Thanks for participating in the P1 climax. Now then, on to now, John's first round. Obviously, this is a serious battle with nowhere to run. Oh, uh, by the way, Minchon and the others you're looking for were smushed and captured by me, General Teddy. In other words. Winning in the tournament, you might be able to save them! The way to consider this as a possibility, 
I can't help but furrow my brow at General Teddy's words. So Matsuris and her team were indeed captured. The shadow operatives are professionals when it comes to shadow-related matters. So if our opponent captured them so easily, then we can clearly not clearly cannot afford to underestimate him. Oh, and you can use your persona, persona too, Nakokun. Well, well then, bring on the ring! Immediately after the fake's cry, red pillars appear in midair, surrounding us. They swiftly fall, embedding themselves into the ground. So this is the ring this time. I can surmise the basic rules. It's fair to say invisible walls stretch between the pillars, and I will not be able to proceed until the match is completed. In which case, there is only one option open to me. It seems I haven't time to waste, so I won't bother holding back. Persona! Great! That's the Nagokun I know! I wouldn't be so certain. You can never win against me. Final. So yeah, you know, even though Naoto's voice is different in this game, uh, all of the, uh, like, battle lines are from the old VA. Which I just find kind of weird. Oh, did I just get bursted? I did get bursted. How unfortunate. Shouldn't have started back kicking. Oh god. <laughs> They're not locked in place with the gun thing. I how this one works. What, I, I, I do this... And then... Crosshair starts showing up or something? There we go. <laughs> Farewell. Perhaps I took it too far. Oh, I lost. Well, I guess, I guess that's, that's enough. As I said, you cannot win against me. Our forms can be mimicked, but you can never replicate our inner drive. It was strong. Though I wore a brave face to intimidate my opponent, had I put one foot wrong, it could have been me who was defeated. For some reason, I feel much more exhausted than I remember being the, being the case when I would fight inside the TV world. Is it because of my opponent's abilities, or...? This is a setup. There is a mighty cracking sound, and the red pillars to the four sides of me shatter. I have evidently emerged the victor without any problems, and gained the right to proceed. As that happens, the false Shia Senpai begins to disintegrate before my eyes. It must have been created by tampering with a shadow. Huh? What is that? What appear to be grains of light float up from the rapidly dissolving fake. They form a ribbon of light, drawing an arc in the air, and drift away in a particular direction as if drawn to something. Thinking back upon the battle, I believe I saw similar grains of light whenever my persona and the fakes would clash. What are they? Could they be fragments of something? When I follow the light with my eyes, I can scarcely believe what I see. There is an enormous and bizarrely shaped structure which has no place in a rural town, or anywhere else in the real world. Is that the hill where Yasugami High is? The orbs of light are gathering there. Something's off. The opponent's methods are different from Labrys's case. They're challenging us head on now. The salient aspects of this case are the red fog enveloping the real world, a giant tower atop Yasugami High, the grains of light that appear in battle, and this strange exhaustion I feel. Suddenly, something pops into my mind. Those documents I obtained from public safety. One of them detailed a past case involving Mitsuru-san's team, involving a giant tower that only appeared during a special period of time. If I recall correctly, it was called Tartarus? What is that, a toothpaste? That aberrant tower was built to call forth something monstrous. Is it possible that... Is the culprit of this case intending to... I must ask that you not needlessly inquire further. Now is not yet the time. <sighs> Impossible. This is unlike my encounter with the false Chia Senpai. I was paying close attention to my surroundings. Yet this man suddenly appeared behind me, as if from thin air. Naoto Shirogami. You will be making your exit here. Die. A clear voice pierces the red fog. And the next sound that reaches my ears is what seems to be a blade slicing the air. Uh, 
Uh, well, that's that's not good. You don't like to see that one. Uh, anyways, enough of that. Enough of Naruto fucking dying or something. Uh, let's just go over here and see what Risa's up to. With a chapter called, I Can Fight Too. What is this? What's happened here? What I saw when I finally reached Yasuo Inaba Station was an eerily distorted building in a town that had turned into a maze. I kept walking for a while and eventually made it to the floodplain, but I didn't see any people around at all. And that feeling I've had ever since that train stopped so suddenly, by the time I reach Inaba, that suspicion has changed into certainty. This is exactly like the TV world. But if that's true, then... I don't know what's going on, but if this is the same as the TV world, then there's something I can do. I concentrate hard and speak to the presence sleeping inside me, the way I've gotten so used to doing. Come, Persona! I knew it! I can use my Persona! I don't know what's going on, but I might be able to find everyone. I concentrate once again and search for presences. My senses slowly sharpen. At first, I can only feel out what's near me, but then it extends further and further out. Eventually, my senses spread all across the town, like I'm reaching my arms out wide. The readings I get are faint and hazy, probably because of the red fog everywhere, but I still pick up on several familiar presences. But it doesn't seem like any like my attempts to reach them are working. I'm really no use after all. Even though we have the same type of power, I wonder if things would be different if Fukusan was doing this. Just the other day, Fukusan saved everyone from a bad situation from much further away than I could manage. If she were here, she could probably support her companions even through this fog. I don't have the power to fight. I can't even give proper backup. I'm no good to anyone. My concentration breaks, and what readings I, I had slip into the fog. Just as I'm about to fall to my knees in despair, a strong reading I can sense even without focusing appears in the sky. Huh? W what? It's a bird? It's a plane? No, it's Elizabeth! Down from the sky with a loud declaration comes a woman in blue. The lady descends lightly and gazes at the dumbstruck look on my face with a slightly cocked head. Please excuse my raucous entrance. If I recall correctly, you are everyone's reset. The announcer of the P1 Grand Prix, no? Huh? That wasn't really me. Wait, who are you? You know, I remember those blue clothes from the P1 Grand Prix. She's the one with tremendous power that General Teddy was mad at, calling her an intruder. I don't think she's an enemy. Granted, I have no idea who she is. Oh, pardon me. I am Elizabeth, the wandering elevator attendant who has presently totally abandoned her duties. I once presided over a certain power in a certain room, but for opaque reasons I am brilliantly... Brilliantly? No, currently, on a wandering journey. You presided over power... Okay... Greatestly, exactly. Um, it feels odd to bring this up, but it was okay for you to abandon your duties? Hello? Can you explain the question? I guess I kind of abandoned my duties once, too. I ran away from where I was. But now that I'm trying to make a comeback, it's been really tough. This news of a comeback concert isn't grabbing me, either. A concert, you say? I know of such things. It is a mysterious ritual that only chosen ones can perform. Within the flood of sound that tempts people, the crowd repeats a chaotic dance to their heart's content, eventually achieving a state of rapture. Uh, it's not like that. By the way, Miss Rosette, are you sure that you should be reposing in a place like this? Huh? I have been observing this town state for some time now, and it seems this red fog has completely enveloped it. If left as is, I do believe that matters will take a turn in an unfavorable direction for you and your friends. What? Elizabeth, do you know something? Is you, Senpai? Is everyone okay? My, why are you asking me? When it comes to searching for your friends, I recall your power being uniquely suited to the task. I can't find anything in all this fog. It's no use. I see. In other words, you are grieving for your powerlessness, electing to stand here without attempting to search for your friends on your own. <sighs> what a disappointing turn of events. I have no interest in such a dull person. Please excuse me. She's right. Why was I staying around here? Why did I keep worrying so much? Everyone may be in trouble, but I can move. 
I can think. I might even be able to help if I can get close enough to pick up on everyone's location. Until I've run around so much I can't take another step, searched as hard as I can, and done everything in my power, I have no right to whine that it's no use. Elizabeth! Hmm? What seems to be the matter? I have already lost interest in... No, I just wanted to thank you. I'll try doing what I can. Oh, what a horrific change of heart. Or is that heroic? Either way, it seems you have realized the potential that slumbers within you. Truly impressive. But if you were to encounter a shadow right now, your current strength would not be sufficient to fully beat the snot out of it. Huh? Which is why I have the sudden urge to test whether your resolve is truly sincere. Wait, what are you... Please, do not waste your breath as I come at you. Your fate is in the cards. Huh? What? Why is this happening? No, I need to go look for everyone. When the shadow that appears behind Elizabeth swings its sword, a shockwave shoots forward, parting the red fog and gouging the concrete on my feet. This isn't good. At this rate, Elizabeth will wipe me out before I can find everyone. No, I'm going to protect you, Senpai, and all the others, no matter what. I will not miss again. I hope you are prepared. Persona! No way! My persona?! <laughs> I'm starting to grow excited. I must say it's been rather a long time since I last felt this exhilarated. I am going to do this. <laughs> Decision. I'm going to stay and protect everyone. Now, show me the transformation of the potential within you. Burn it into my memory. So yeah, now we're taking beat the shit out of things with our persona. Don't get used to it, though. Okay, so I, I, I played his reset like a total of like <laughs> two or three times. I remember many times I had to play as her in the story. That's all I played as her as. But hey, I do have to try to show off her uh, insta-kill ability. So that'll be fun to try to do. Oh, is that a counter I just did? That's pretty neat. Ow. Thanatos, don't hurt me, please. Uh, Elizabeth, also don't grab me. I would really prefer if you didn't grab me. Because that stuff just kind of sucks. Oh no, I just like burned meter. I didn't mean to. Oh no. No, no, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, she wasn't close enough. I could just die and do it again. Well, looks like I'm just gonna die anyways, because this grab will, will kill me. What the fuck? What was, what was that sound? Anyways, I fucking hate playing Elizabeth. She's annoying. Really annoying. All right, so we're gonna try that again. I can skip this. Maybe, maybe it's not like worth it, huh? You know, and I'm pretty sure in arena, the regular arena, I was skipping that, the um, the PS3 version. Uh, I mean, at least we get this like awesome song. The song is really good. This is one of my favorite songs from the uh, Ultimax soundtrack. Yeah, like I said, Elizabeth fucking sucks. Uh, any like enemy like, mini-boss thing in a, in a fighting game is usually just kind of annoying to fight. I don't know, it's like playing Mortal Kombat 9 and, like, fighting Shao Kahn. Like, it's always just kind of, like, the most absurd turn of events. She fucking jumped over me! Elizabeth, you're a fucking cocksucker, you know that? Yeah, your fate's in the fucking mic stand I have. Eat a combo. And don't come back. I'm slapping the absolute shit out of her right now. Okay, that sound is very not good. Oh my god. Well, hey, at least I don't have to worry about this episode being too short after two fucking chapters, because this fucking fight sucks. 
I don't know why I'm complaining that much. It's, it's not like it's really that big of a problem. I, I do that, though. It mostly stems from insecurities. Because I'm like, oh man, I didn't do this on the first try. I'm fucking dog shit. I'm garbage. And I th this is unacceptable. Uh, and this is now just bad. And then again, I tend to think that everything I do is bad. I didn't want to use meter. I would like to insta-kill Elizabeth. And not hear that sound ever again. That sound is way too loud. Okay, we're just gonna burst out of that. Oh, okay, so that's just a throw. That's good to know. And then this fucking grab comes through and I just get instant feared. Yeah, so how about we get rid of this since I'm hitting the shit out of her? Okay, well, see, I still want to... <laughs> we're just gonna hug her. Wow, you hugged her and then you're saying don't touch me. And now, okay, well, Elizabeth, don't look up. I... I won? Well, it took three tries. Truly impressive. You have indeed shown me the power of mankind's potential. The sound of her clothes in that book was, like, really loud. Elizabeth lightly brushes away the dust on her clothes from the fight and smiles at me. Um, why did you help me out? Help you? Hmm, I didn't even have the shiniest intention of helping you. But I didn't know that my persona could do that stuff. Isn't that why you helped me? I see. That was not my intention at all. But if you say so, then I'm starting to get the sense that it may be true. Elizabeth, how are you going to deal with the power of the wild card if you're, if you're not going to make bonds, okay? In which case, it would only be natural to demand worthy compensation for such assistance. Huh? Wait, are you asking me for money? Or perhaps your soul? Well, definitely not. A ticket to your comeback concert would do as well. Oh, I could probably swing that. Hmm, no. I believe I shall ask for this world's future instead. That's pretty vague. Either way, it is decided. A struggle between solitude and bonds. The two great potentials of mankind is about to begin. I have no intention of assisting either side, but neither can I dismiss the contest as irrelevant to me. You lost me there. But what you're talking about is why this town got messed up, right? Indeed. Whether your bonds will win the day, or whether that young man's solitude will emerge victorious. I am massively intrigued as to how this struggle will end. That young man... Whoa, are you talking about the culprit behind this? Dear me, I've accidentally slipped up. In any case, please look over there. Elizabeth points past the fog. They have dodging her own words. Well, I'm not letting her off that easy, but she probably won't tell me anything more. I'm a little puzzled, but I go ahead and look at where she's pointing, and then I can help and lean forward in utter shock. <laughs> Out there on the hill, the same view as Juness, and the same view as, uh, wherever the fuck else it was, uh, where Yaskami High should be, is this weird huge tower. It looks like some kind of evil villain's lair. I believe that is where the final battle will take place. Seems a number of your friends are already headed that way. What will you do, Miss Rosette? I'll go too, so I can fight with them. A perfect answer. I give you a gold star. She draws a large star with one hand and goes directly into an elegant bow. She's probably headed off somewhere now. I really can't figure her out. Well then, I bid you good luck, Miss Rosette. After I see her off and she vanishes into the fog, I look up. I've got to get to Yasugami High. I'll help everyone this time for sure. All right, well, we're going to try to get through Chapter 7. It's a bit of a longer one, though, but, uh, who cares? <laughs> I'm not losing again, because I don't have to fight Elizabeth again. At least I fucking hope I don't. Uh, anyways, since how we started Naoto's Chapter 6, uh, let's actually just go check out what's going on here with Naoto Cornered. The strike I barely dodged grazes my cheek and slices through the air. The pain of the initial blow which struck my back is beginning to affect my breathing. My throat constricts and I have difficulty getting air into my lungs. Only by force of will do I, do I keep from blacking out as I look toward my assailant, who now approaches me. A young man, and he wears a Yasugami High uniform. You dodged. Such a struggle you put up. You're wasting my time. Who are you? I am Minazu. Show me I am the one who will destroy you, the Kirijo fools, 
and this world. Now, if you noticed it, keep that in mind for later. Uh, so, you're the ones who captured Mitsuru-san and... Yes, I caught them off guard, just as I did with you here. It seems you're not very perceptive. So Mitsuru-san are people that have fallen into enemy hands after all. It's hard to believe. Is this young man truly the mastermind behind these incidents? Though your intuition is impressive. For you to discern our plan after only one battle. It's an absurd scheme. What are you trying to summon with that tower? I gather that his plan is far more dreadful than what I had imagined at the start. That grotesque tower called Taurus, which was brought forth to call upon something inhuman. What if the culprit in this case also intends on summoning something to this world? And what if that reason our enemy makes no move to hide the fakes and challenges us to legitimate fights is because they need to gather something before that plan can be achieved? Don't get me wrong. That in itself is not my objective. All I want is to grant a wish. A wish? Whose? There's no need for you to know. This isn't good. He's already close enough for his attack to reach me. I'm still suffering from his earlier strike. Monazuki's next blow will surely cost me my life. I need to buy whatever time I can now. You kidnapped Lavis and attempted to collect our personas before, but that's not the case this time. You're using Mitsuru-san and her team as hostages, and you've prepared fake versions of us to fight. Hmm. There's only one reason why you create such elaborate imitations of us, even to the point of summoning personas and have them challenge us. You set this entire scenario up so that we wouldn't think twice about fighting. That's right. Everything was set up from the start. It's the same rules as last time. After drumming that impression into our heads, our opponents admit outright that they're fakes. And as a result, I had stopped trying to figure out the motivations behind their actions. Since they'd taken hostages and warped this town, we concluded that we had no choice but to play along, and were willing to fight without further hesitation. But I suspect Minoski must be gaining those shining particles I saw earlier through our battles with the fakes. Again, your intuition is impressive. By forcing you to fight in this fog, I am carving off bits of your personas. Carving off our personas? I've said too much. It seems our guests of honor have arrived. Minazuki turns his gaze to the sky and narrows his eyes, as if looking beyond the red fog. Simultaneously, the faint sound of a helicopter becomes evident. I enjoyed my time with you. If the opportunity arises again, I'd like to speak with you. With that, Minazuki gracefully puts distance between us. The moment there's enough space for someone to intrude between us, a shadow comes dancing down from the sky, as if awaiting that exact moment. Labyrinth stands between Minazuki and myself as if shielding me. It seems I've been spared the worst case scenario. The sound of the helicopter's rotors still remains in the sky above us. It appears to be slowly descending. I strongly suspect that a plume of dust is installed into that helicopter. I recall entering the public safety documents explaining how a plume of dust would, be, would enable machinery to continue functioning, even in supernatural space times where no other electronics would work. It's unlikely to let my mind wander into matters of parascience. Perhaps it's a relief. Uh, it's a relief in my life no longer being in peril. Who are you? Why are you doing all this? Who am I? Hmm? A constant question. It's quite intriguing that a machine created for suppressing shadows will What? But first, let me see the rest of you. As Minoski keeps his eyes on Laris, a black liquid shadow rises from behind him, instantly ascending to the helicopter. It's a shadow, no, a persona. And it means to take down that helicopter. No! Yukari-san! Capcom! Labyrinth cries out in desperation. For some users, though they may be, they are still human. If they go down along with the helicopter they're in, they'll be grievously wounded at best. Persona! An unfamiliar woman's voice calls out from within the helicopter. And all at once, a tremendous gust of wind swirls about the helicopter, repelling the black shadow's ambush at the last second. Ah, quite awesome. However, Yukari-san, he's winding up for another one! 
Just as the whirlwind dies down, an attack originating from within the helicopter speeds towards Minazuki's persona, which is primed to attack again. Amazing! What a perfectly timed maneuver! The surrounding fog lights up, and as the personas clash at each other, those grains of light that Minazuki is after disperse. At the same time, three figures jump out of the helicopter and descend towards us. The whir of the helicopter's rotors increases, which I take to mean that it's flying off somewhere, so then, its objective from the start was to drop these people off here. I look once again to the two new arrivals in the animal that have descended upon the food court. Ah, I know who they are. After all, it was only a moment ago I was at the at Inaba Station reviewing documents pertaining to them. Whew, that was close. But now that we're here, you don't get to do whatever you want anymore. Woo, let's go, Michelle Ruff! Naoto Shiragani, right? Are you all okay? We'll handle this. And then, oh, it's Ken. But hey, there's Koromaru. <laughs> Obviously, they are older than the pictures in the documents. But the woman is Yukari Takiba, the calm boy is Kenamata, and the snow white Chiba following closely at Kenkun's heels is Koromaru san. They were all involved in the incident which occurred when Mitsuru san was in high school, and though they are not officially numbered members, they are persona users on the Shadow Operatives Emergency Suppression Unit, the Auxiliary Staff. Auxiliary? Auxiliary. Yeah, I guess that's good. Labrys, I'm trusting now Takun with you. Gotcha! You don't have to worry about a thing now. So you're our enemy. You won't escape now. I just gotta say, I... I... Ah, uh, Ken's... Uh, he just looks like a rat. He is just a rat boy. A rat man, dude. Look at this kid. The three of them fan out to Minatsuki's left and right, readying themselves for combat. Such efficient tactical movements, all while never dropping their guard. I wonder how often one must face death in order to become like them. The players have finally gathered. It's nice to meet you. I am Minazuki. Show Minazuki. Welcome to this world. I wanted to meet you all, especially Kirito. You are the ones who killed his father, after all. Huh? What's he talking about? Who knows? I don't really care, either. I like this kid. No, I don't. I have no intention of fighting you now. I only wished to see your faces. His world. Minazuki's phrasing catches my attention. This could be an important clue to the culprit's motives. Could Minazuki mean that he instigated this in order to avenge someone whose parent or parents were killed? Perhaps he's seeking revenge on the Shadow Operatives. No, that's not right. Given that they took Mitsurusan's group hostage and summoned the others here, it seems more likely that Minazuki wants revenge on Mitsurusan and her associates from high school. I'll be heading back now. Take your time. When Minoski raises his hand, a different voice echoes from further in. It's a voice I know only too well. Don't get the wrong idea. I'll be What the? What's going on? Another now, Tokun? <sighs> Don't be deceived. That's an imitation of me. An imitation? Huh. That sounds like the kind of dirty trick they pull. Huh. My doppelganger raises one hand to the sky. He means to summon the red pillars that form the arena. I'm still too badly injured to dodge this, but I can't allow us all to be trapped here. Everyone, get away from me! Hurry! <gasps> Yukari-san, Kodamaru, spread out! Yukari-san, Kenkun, and Koromaru-san jump back in response to my warning shout. Labrys, on the other hand, maintains her position shielding me, making no attempt at all to move. Ah, I see now. Yukari-san told Labrys that I'm trusting Naoto-kun with you, and Labrys would never abandon her duties. Yukari-san and Kenkun understand that as well, and so Labrys was not mentioned when Kenkun gave the order to spread out. Very efficient teamwork. I feel that I understand the secret behind the Shadow Operative's strength somewhat. Yeah, it's because you had to fucking give him commands because you couldn't directly control him unless you're playing portable, but that's not what we're talking about here. Portable doesn't exist. Well, it does. We'll get to that later. The four red pillars that fall from the sky embed themselves firmly into the food court's floor and release a dull light. Thank goodness. Yukari-san and the others seem to have escaped the pillar's field of influence. What's going on? Wait, what the? Where's the culprit? What? Wait, when did he... Now that they mention it, I too realize for the first time that Minoski is nowhere to be seen. 
Minazuki's presence is completely gone. It vanished from the area just as suddenly as it appeared behind me. Uh, also, before I continue, I, I don't remember if Ken's voice changed. Regardless, if it did, it's like really, really similar to uh, Persona 3, but I mean, of course, he's older now, so maybe not as great. He just looks like a rat. Yukari-san tries to take a step forward and hits her head badly on the invisible wall. Uh, perhaps I gave them too much credit before. It's possible that these shadow operatives are, in fact, surprisingly careless. This is just like the last P1 Grand Prix! Except we're in the real world. Hello! General Teddy here! Long time no see, Labby-chan! Boo, get out of here! We don't care! supposed to be my shadow. Whoa! Yeah, or something like that. Is that Inaba's persona user Teddy? He doesn't look like a bear to me. He just looks like a plush mascot. Is he dressed up like that on purpose? Oh. You there! Silence in the peanut gallery! How dare you call my bona fides into question? I'll have you know I look terrific! Crap, you heard me. Last chance to push your luck like that. Abby Chan and Nao Chan aren't getting out of here until you win a one on one fight. So, are you okay with that? Are you gonna move on without your friends? Hurry up and decide whether you're gonna enter the ring or not. Will you shut up? Fine, let's do this. I'll go in and. No, please move on. Huh? You can't let him provoke you. Culprit's aim is to make us fight against our doubles, thereby carving off our personas. Carve off our personas? Mitsura-san and the others are within the tower on the hill. It won't be easy, but try and avoid combat with the imitations as you rescue them. Okay, Labrys, we're leaving the rest to you. Oh, what's this? They left you behind. I guess that's the extent of this friendship you go all about. That's not true. What about, about it is not true? For it seems to me that the others moved on, leaving me to move You clearly have no understanding of the bonds between people. Yeah, what she said. They didn't ditch us. Yukari-san believes in me, so that's why she trusted me to take care of Naotoku. And that's why I'm gonna make sure to knock you out of the park myself. What? They're making me play as a bottom tier character? Boo! We're talking bottom three. <laughs> like, I, I don't actually know if that's exactly true or not. I was... Uh, originally, when I was trying to figure out the uh, the chapter breakdown of this game, I thought maybe I'd go to Game Facts and look at, like, a, a you know, a walkthrough, and it would tell me, like, you know, what like what is what, just so I could be good, which I had to go re-download this um, from my PS3 emulator and look at my save file for that. But uh, apparently, Mitsuru, Junpei, and Labras are <laughs> the worst three characters in this game. Uh, Junpei is fun, though, because he has a mechanic that is so overly complex for no apparent reason, and I don't know how it works. Okay, well, let's see here. Um, a long distance tether. I might be a pizza opponent. Okay, so it says long distance. How the fuck did she, like... like, that, I, 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 like she was she was there, was she not? Did she not get fucking hit by it? Alright. Oh, Persona Break? Yeah, cool. Watch me fucking care. I have a giant axe, you stupid fucking bitch. God, this game's gonna make me go into fucking arcade mode to show all the bullshit off. Even I was excited. Congratulations. Yeah, that sounds like new Naoto. What a fantastic, 
fantastic battle. We must have gathered a good many persona fragments just from that alone. <laughs> The other me melts to a puddle in the center of the food court. It's a most unpleasant sight to behold. I hear a cracking sound and turn to see the red pillars that had trapped a shatter. The invisible walls should be gone as well, but... Was it okay, Naltokun? We ended up fighting this thing. There was no getting around it. Our enemy has Mitsurasan, her friends, and this town hostage. Besides, we had no means of escape. So, everything was set up perfect. Who do you think that Minazuki guy is? I don't know, but... <sighs> I can't help but fall to my knees from the pain I'd forgotten about. I haven't completely recovered from Min Min eh, Minazuki's strike yet. Naoto-kun! I, I think it'd be pretty hard to recover from a sword slash that quickly. Lyris promptly lends me her shoulder. This may be an odd thing to say, but it's at times like this that I truly feel I've made friends. Not that I ever say such things in front of my senpai. Thank you, Labrys. You truly saved my life. Come on, no need to thank me. I told you it was my turn to help you guys out. But what about Yukun and them? We inform each other of what's happened up until this point and exchange information. Labrys' team was investigating Inaba Pass where Mitsuru-san's group went missing and were headed here after filling up on gas. While we spoke on the phone, midnight struck and she saw the change in the town from the air. It seems that red fog suddenly rose up to cover the town, and a giant tower appeared on the hill where Yasukami High is situated. In addition to Yukari-san, Ken-kun and Koromaru-san, there is a man in town by the name of Junpei Iori, whom they haven't yet been able to meet up with. All told, the Shed operatives sent four people, or rather, three people and a dog. Just like I thought. Though that fake you was a tough customer. What in the world are they? The imitations seem to be crafted from shadows. I'm astonished that they can even copy our Persona abilities. But that aside, let's hurry, Labrys. There's actually something I couldn't tell you, Kari-san, earlier. Huh? What's that? It's that young man Minazuki's true objective. He's gathering Persona fragments from us in an attempt to summon something hideous. Something hideous? Indeed. He used the tower leaning on the hill, just as Tartarus was used when Mitsuru-san and her friends were in high school. I don't know what in particular he intends to bring forth, but there's no denying that his aim is something along those lines. Really? Oh yeah, I actually felt something odd about that guy myself. Odd? In what way? Well, when I got close to him, I felt something strange. It was exactly like the feeling I get from those plumes of dust we have as cores. Oh, does this mean he had a plume of dust in his possession? Not exactly. It wasn't that he had one on him. It was more like it was synced up with his heart. It felt just like ours do. Synced with his heart? I don't understand. The plume of dust was integrated into the core of Labrys and her sister unit, Aigasan. It plays the role of a heart in their mechanical bodies. But that man, Minazuki, seemed to be no different from us at first glance. What could it mean that, he, that she detected a plume of dust in him? The faint light that has been scattered everywhere is gathering now. And I'm starting to see the outline of the truth, but there are still missing pieces. If we rescue Mitsurasan's group and learn what they know, then I expect we'll be able to reach some sort of conclusion. Labrys looks into my face as I'm lost in thought and smiles to try to cheer me up. Relax. We'll never lose. You saw us fight earlier, right? Yukari-san and ken -kun can really kick some ass. I mean, Ken is at least good for, like, the, the pocket, like, Ziodine to, like, knock down one of those tank enemies. And I guess in the answer, he was good for the first dungeon, the first part of the first dungeon, where he could, you know, get some lucky hamas, but, I mean, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, wh whatever you think, Labrys. Labrys speaks with satisfaction, with a proud look on her face. It's a far cry from the Labrys I first met a few days ago. It seems you've made some wonderful friends, Labrys. Huh? Oh. Uh, <gasps> you think it's okay for me to think of them that way? It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> That's how it is at the start. Once you come to realize it, though, you'll find that it turns to a warm feeling within you. Huh. Is that how it was for you, Naotokun? Who knows? Perhaps it was. I recall when I first met my senpai, and a wry smile forms on my lips. Feeling a bit embarrassed at this, I pulled the brim of my hat down over my eyes. 
It's not just Labrys. The same is true for me and many others I've never met. We all go through this process to find what's precious and irreplaceable to us. Let's go rendezvous with the others. Oh, okay, then. Looks like we had enough time for that backslash to heal. Good job, Naoto. Good recovery. Good recovery. Now, uh, it's 45 minutes in the in my recording time. But we still have the other part of Chapter 7. Which, I don't know, this, th this is the longer section of this chapter. And seeing as how we have gotten to a part where, like, we've kind of finished up what storylines we had from the start of this episode... Uh, this actually gives me a good time to do this. So we will stop here for now, but before the episode ends, I need to go make up for my failures, and I'm just gonna go to training mode. Let's hit the lab. All right, so here we are in my training mode. Uh, let's see, I don't think I need to do anything specific. I think I can just fucking go for it. But uh, look at this nice recolor for Labyrinth. It looks great. I love how, like, when you do that, Elizabeth's just, like, laying there like, yeah, so what? I don't care. Alright, so I, I got the the closest to Hatsune Miku Risei I can get. And then there's, uh, there's Teddy. So this is what I would like to do to Teddy, uh, after that one fucking scene, toward when he comes back in Persona 4 Golden, it's really disgusting because he gropes Risei in the most vulnerable moment. Anyways, Teddy, time to die. Really? Really? Ah! Really? I will protect Get fucked, Teddy. Get owned by the Hatsune Miku Risei skin. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna do it for this episode. So yeah, here we go. If I don't get to do it in, a, in an episode, I'll just do this. So next time, we get to catch back up with you and the crew and figure out what's going on in the school there. See you next time. <laughs>